My name is Bonnie Hamilton. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, Bonnie, you've been traveling around Tunisia for about 10 days, but you have a s special connection here. Do you want to just share a little bit about why you, what brought you back here and what brought you to Tunisia some years ago? Well, I was here 43 years ago with the Peace Corps, and I taught English as a foreign language in uh, two different towns, Monastir, which at that time was the birthplace of the president, uh, Habib Bourguiba. And I also taught uh, in Sousse at the Lycée de Jeunes Filles. And uh, I had a wonderful experience and have never been back here in 43 years. And I am absolutely thrilled to be here and to have been on this trip. So what are the things that impressed you most and are the most noticeable changes over those years since the Peace Corps left Tunisia and since you were here? Well, you know, in some parts of the country, it hasn't changed much. Uh, in the interior, uh, I would say there have not been many changes uh, visually. Of course, politically, you know, the, the revolution has taken place, so that's taken place all over the country. But um, along the, the uh, Mediterranean, the changes have been enormous, absolutely enormous, uh, because of the growth, uh, the population growth, and I guess the, the growth in the tourism industry. Uh, that has caused uh, so much building to take place in all of the cities along the along the coast. Now, did you? We we traveled uh, through the heart of the country, including the areas where the revolution started. Uh, did you feel insecure at all? Oh no, absolutely not. And for absolutely Americans not. who I, did you have family members or friends who? who questioned why you would want to go to Tunisia during this time? Not really. I actually had great encouragement from my husband uh, and my daughter and was fortunate enough to have my son uh, come along because he was very interested in what my life, uh, you know, where I had spent two years because I speak about it so often. But actually, I wasn't and my friends were not, were not concerned. Um, there were a few neighbors who sort of looked at me a little funny, but... Um, you know, I have felt perfectly safe. And it's for someone wonderful. who says, uh, thank you, for someone who says, well, it's right next to Libya and all the problems, what, what would your response Well, in, in fact, I mean, that made it so interesting. Hatem Boreal, who was uh, our guide, was so knowledgeable. Honestly, uh, we all feel as if we have had a graduate course in Tunisian history and culture, and I mean Tunisian history for thousands of years. Uh, you know, before Christ, uh, it's it's been absolutely extraordinary uh, experience. Well, we thank you for sharing with people, and we hope you spread the word when you go back to, to the United States. I certainly will. Bonnie, regarding the comment about the uh, the question that I asked, and then the comment about being close to Libya, what, any uh, tell us any experiences you sh you had that dealt with. Uh, what's going on next door in Libya. We really had the most extraordinary experience of uh, being invited to dinner at the home of a young man whom we had met, uh, who, who Jerry Sorkin knows well, um, to the home of his parents. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this young man was getting married. His house was prepared for him to move to once he was married uh, in July. This is in Kirwan. In Kirwan, and um, he had given his home over to a family of Libyans. In fact, he had organized in Kirwan uh, 30 or 40 families to take families who were refugees from Libya. And we went to his home. We met the man who was really, he was a meteorologist, <clears throat> and he was a spokesman for the group. And then we uh, asked if we could meet the women. And they were a bit hesitant at first, but we, we did uh, go into where the women were, and we had really the most extraordinary experience of talking to the women uh, between our French and our little tiny bit of Arabic. Uh, we did well with them, and they explained how frightened the children had been and how wonderful it was to be in Tunisia where they were all safe. Uh, then uh, one of the men, uh, came up to us and said, please, could you come? We'd, we'd like to talk to you. He had just come back from Libya. He had gone there to take medicine across the border. And he was quite concerned uh, about his safety and the safety of his family in Libya if anyone found out that he had crossed the border. Uh, he was uh, really very brave to, to make this run of medication. Uh, and very eager to tell us the story of things that had happened in his village 
uh, how uh, the water had been uh, poisoned um, and how they, uh, the citizens had been, um, really, uh, there were people who were taken from his village, there were 40 people taken from his village and murdered and brought back and people scattered into the foothills of, uh, of the mountains. So it was really a very uh, powerful, moving uh, few hours that we spent with, with these family members. Well, and considering Tunisia having just gone through its own revolution and having severe economic problems as a result, it's stories like that really are the untold stories of what Tunisians uh, are doing. And uh, they re that really, I think, underscores an, the, what makes generosity. this country very special on their hospitality. Their, their, their generosity and their hospitality is really remarkable, uh, and especially in the face of some families are not that well off who are accepting uh, uh, to, uh, Libyan families into their homes for an indefinite period of time. Well, again, thank you for sharing that. That's a very a important point to note, and we appreciate it. Thanks again.